Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Dr. Marty Amsalem, author of The Big Idea Journal, a tool for facilitating change and bringing your idea to life. Dr. Marty, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me here. Well, we are thrilled to have you. Are you ready to begin? Absolutely. All right. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? The advice that I would give is to come up with some firm deadlines for yourself. There are so many things that can stand in our way. Oftentimes when people are writing, there are um, you know, that that might be a hobby. This is likely not your day job yet. <laughs> so um, carving out that time um, is essential. Um, that time, of course, is a primary barrier that uh, probably all of us face, though there are certainly many other barriers, too. So the other piece of advice I would give is to get in touch with whatever, all you know, all of the barriers that you have, you know, whether it's, you know, fear of, you um, of completion, <laughs> um, fear of, you know, getting the book out there. there. That can certainly hold people back, too. But um, recognizing what those barriers are and carving out the time and getting firm with um, some, some deadlines of when you would like things to be done and putting in the effort to work toward them. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? I think that we can be our own worst enemies when it comes to getting published. So um, recognizing that if there are challenges that you're facing, um, that these are problems that can be solved. So there are certainly many avenues for getting published and recognizing um, that if one avenue is um, presenting a bit of a roadblock there that it, you know that this is a challenge that you can address that you can solve you can look at alternate um, you know if, if you're looking at one if you're self-publishing and one self public you know one publisher the, uh, seems like that is not a good fit there are others out there so let's talk about marketing so please share a marketing mm-hmm. strategy that you have used in your book launch that has mm-hmm. worked well That has worked well. I think that, you know, for me, that you know, this is something that I am still learning myself, um, truth be told, but something that has worked well for me is partnering. So I did a book launch with another author that was launching uh, her first book at the same time. They were on similar, there were, there were themes that were, uh, that were, um, you know, that joined what we were doing um, together. And we both gave a, a book talk at the same time. Um, you know, focus on the commonalities, and that was really that was really good because I think for both of us, it um, you know it, it gave us exposure that we might not have uh, received otherwise, and it was a great feel good event. Excellent. So, how did you do that? How did you do the reach out, and how were you able to make that partnership for the yeah? Launch? This was actually through an organization that um, you know that wanted to create an event that was around um, empowerment, really, Um, because that's essentially the common theme that um, both myself and the other author had. So that was something that helped to, you know, that helped the organization get that message out in a way that their audience could relate to, right? Having, um, you know, having female authors out there talking about how they were able to, um, you know, get their books published. Um, You know, each of us have had um, careers doing other things um, before becoming an author. I am a psychologist and, um, you know, this person had been an attorney um, and and, um, it it really was a way for us to, um, you know, to get the message out that anybody um, who wants to, you know, who has this drive um, can make something happen. 
Well, speaking of books, I'd like to know what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Well, I love that question, and I, I'm i sure that with every author, you could spend all day talking about favorite books. But um, the book that I'm choosing to talk about right now in our time together is something that is along the lines of the book that I wrote. Um, and this, the name of the book is 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. Um, and that is written by a uh, licensed clinical social worker named, um, by the name of Amy Marin. Um, she um, basically drew on life experiences um, to outline um, some of the key characteristics of mentally strong people um, and that might converse the things that they do not do. And it, um, it was not something she had set out to do. Um, you know, she didn't set out to become a best-selling author, um, but because she had uh, shared her um, observations of the world um, in a very relatable way, um, in a very direct way, um, and had a very compelling story, um, I think that it was really, it really resonated with a lot of people. And she has uh, since um, written other um, books written for more specific populations, including parents. Um, I believe also one um, for women. I have not yet read that one. Um, and it is, uh, it's, it's been influential for me because I see somebody who has a similar background to myself, of course, not exactly the same, but um, who has channeled what they um, have observed in life into a guidebook that can be useful for others. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? All right. So again, I think many people have said some amazing things, but one that I've heard recently that I want to share is a quote by Sophia Bush. And she has said, you are allowed to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. And I think that sums up so much. And we can be compassionate with ourselves in wherever we are. And that is something that I also, uh, in my day job as a practicing psychologist, I um, very much believe in as, and, and try to communicate as well as um, in the book that I have written, um, The Big Idea Journal that um, it is okay to reflect on both of our both our successes as well as our challenges and, and it's more than just okay it is something that can drive us to continue to achieve i think it's a very useful um, thing to do to reflect on that well that's amarni i want to thank you for being a guest on the show what is the best way for people to find you online Great question. Um, I welcome everybody to come find me online if you are so interested. I am on social media um, under the handle Right Reflect Grow. And Right Reflect Grow is um, a business that I've launched that is focused on reflective journaling. Um, and I will also have a series of journals that will be coming out in this year, in the new year. Um, so I, am, I will be sharing updates on my social media. I am on Twitter, Instagram, um, and Facebook. And uh, for myself, I also have a, a Twitter handle. Uh, it is, uh, well, it's my name, Marnie Amsalem, and I believe my handle is Smart Psych Reads. And um, there I tweet primarily about uh, mental health, uh, stress coping, and other uh, areas of, of specialty in psychology. Well, that's Marnie. Thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best. Thank you again for having me. Oh, thank you so much. Same to you. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published Business book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com.